Over the summer, whenever we were sort of relaunching peers and deciding what it is we wanted to build, we did a lot of focus groups. We spoke to a lot of people within our community, a lot of people out of our community. Um, the single most interesting focus group that we did was with um, job seekers in Chicago. It was unemployed people. Um, and uh, the conversation started with an extremely somber tone. Um, people brought in you know, a lot of shame, frankly. Um, they were, they, I've been looking for a job for six months, a year and a half. I spend six to seven hours a day looking for a job. I don't have any options. I'm worried about my kids. I'm worried about my mortgage. Um, there was, you know, the tension in the room was palpable. And then we started to talk about the sharing economy. And we said, you know, hey, have you heard of Airbnb and Lyft and Uber? And most of them had raised their hands. And, and then we sort of went down the list. And what about Feastly and, and Dog Vacay and, um, you know, sort of this, the long tail of dozens and dozens of other opportunities? And people totally lit up whenever they heard this. Um, you know, they, it's like, I love to cook. You know, I, I, I can make money doing that, really? I can earn money, I, you know, I've got a bike. I can, I can do something for Postmates, really? Um, and we followed up, you know, it was, it was, they, this was incredibly empowering to them. That they didn't have to sit around and wait for somebody, you know, to give them a job or to find a job. Um, you know, they were able to take matters in their own, own hands and start earning money right away. Um, we followed up with people and half of the people in that focus group signed up for one of the platforms. So they found this to be a good thing. The other thing that people talked about was, you know, sort of uh, the impact on, uh, you know, the flexibility on their life. And, you know, if they be, you know, people really like these opportunities. Um, to quantify it, uh, on average, people said they'd be willing to make a quarter less um, to, uh, if they had the flexibility, if they had flexibility as opposed to a traditional nine to five job. Um, and when I pushed them on it, what that meant, they said typically, you know, between 45 and $60,000 was the number that people you know, continually were, 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 push, were pushing towards. And that is something that, you know, that is potentially achievable, uh, particularly if you've been working at it for a little while. So I think that trying to start out, you know, to, um, you know, start out and, and try earning from, you know, and relying entirely on TaskRabbit from day one, you're going, it's, it's not going to be successful for you. I'm sorry, Sarah. You know, you have, <laughs> true. It, you've got to understand yeah. that it takes months to build a reputation there on that. And so, people. you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, um, if we can help people understand you know, the way that you can balance the different platforms. So you sign up for a ride sharing platform to do 80% of your work at the beginning because it's going to be consistent income for you. And the other 20% of your time, you do in one or two other platforms for rebuilding your reputation. So I'll people, help people understand what this is like. And then as you are earning on three platforms, um, you talk about job security. I think that income security is something that people are more important about. Um, and so as you have a portfolio of, uh, of income, that actually becomes something that, that's quite robust. I think there can be a very important role for regulatory changes to protect workers in the sharing economy. Um, however, I, wouldn't, uh, I, I would caution policymakers away from um, only trying to solve new problems with old solutions. Um, I think an interesting example could be workers' compensation um, that's typically given to uh, an employee, right? So there's a big debate between if ride-sharing drivers should be employees or contractors. And one reason is that they get workers' compensation insurance. Well. What happens when people are using these platforms very differently? As opposed to working at one place for 40 hours a week, they're working uh, you know, on TaskRabbit for 10 hours a week, and they're working on U Uber for 15 hours a week. Maybe that drops down to zero hours a week another time. Um, are there thresholds that need to be over to get workers' compensation insurance? Is it only for ride sharing? Um, you know, I, I think that it's important we protect workers, regardless of where they're working. Um, and so it might be that you need a new solution. So the solution might not be make them workers. The solution might be get them protection, get them something that, that looks and gives them protection of workers' compensation insurance.